All right, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another Real Talk video with your boy, JT. I pray all of y'all are having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we thank the Most High for so much. My title now says, Man Supposed to Work. I got a hard up word from the Most High that I'm not going to be light with. And um, it's sad that so many men nowadays are living off of a woman. So many men have just gave up. So many men think that the woman's supposed to just take care of them and they live off that woman. But then there are some men out here that I love to give a hand clap to that are working hard, providing, you know, living the way the most I say live. And some of y'all ladies are going to get mad at this video because that sorry man is laying beside you tonight. And he having work, says work, been work. You know, it's 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 um setting such a bad example because now so many children don't have a clue on what work is. They looking at an example of somebody else who is just lazy. That's why so many kids are spoiled and they not even 15 years old hardly and they already got phones that's four hundred dollars they got all kind of gadgets and gadgets and you can't even hardly get them to take the trash out or cut or cut the yard without complaining or washing dishes or cleaning up their room without complaining so it's a bad example being set i'm not talking about it in everybody's home so what i want to do in this video is go back to where the most high showed us man supposed to work Man supposed to be responsible. Man need to learn how to have a close relationship with the Most High first before anything else. Now, I know a lot of these men I'm talking about in this video may be your family member. Maybe even your husband. Maybe even your baby daddy. Or just maybe somebody you fooling with. Let's just keep it real. Everybody's living some kind of lifestyle. You either married or divorced are married, separated, or <laughs> shacking up, or single, or that's just my baby daddy, or that's just my baby mama, or you in some kind of relationship, or you ain't in nothing at all. So when you think about man who won't work, the Bible say he don't supposed to eat. But he's eating up everything and living off of you. It's not just for women who take in men like this. You got men like this in your family that always want to come move in with you to get all of their can out of you and then once they get all of their can out of you, they go to the next person. These are lazy people. And laziness is a sin. Now, let's go back to the story of creation in the Bible in Genesis. We're going to go back to chapter 2. Now, just to sum up chapter 1, I know we all familiar with it, but remember back in, in um, Genesis chapter 1, our Heavenly Father explains how he created in the beginning. Yesterday, I talked about water and how at the beginning it was just only water and how the Most High used water to create everything. And that video led me into this right here about work. Now, when you start reading about the story of creation, and then you see what happened on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day. But then when you get to the seventh day, the Bible says that our father rested. Really, our father didn't need rest. Our father was showing us that we need to rest. Our father never sleeps nor slumber. How can the Holy Spirit get tired? The Holy Spirit does not get tired. The Holy Spirit operates all the time. Because the Holy Spirit is spirit. This flesh gets weak. That's why we need to take time off. We need to rest. So he showed us on the seventh day, y'all need to rest. I always ask people, did our father really even rest? Or did he show us we needed to rest? Because he's spirit. Now, he shows us this beautiful garden of Eden. The most time when he made the heavens and the earth, at first, you see that it wasn't no grass, wasn't no plants, 
nothing wasn't growing and it, it wasn't nothing growing anywhere. So he said, I have not sent any rain and there was no one to work the land. But he came up, when you look at the, the, the way this is laid out, when you get to chapter two, he says, our father says that he formed man of the dust of the ground. So after he already created in Genesis chapter 1, and, and then he said everything that he made was, of course, good. You get around to chapter 2, and it says the Most High formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. I want to break this down where a child could understand this. And it says that man, which is us, became of living soul. A living soul right there. And when you look at that, that's that's verse 7 in, in chapter 2, that, that the most high form man of the dust of the ground breathed into his nostrils, then he had, he had breath, and then he became a living soul. Now verse 8 says, And the most high planted a garden eastward, and Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So right after he created Adam, this is why this is why it's so important to catch this. Right after he created man, he planted the garden, and then right after that, put him to work. He planted the garden, then he put Adam to work. He put Adam to work. He put Adam to work. Let me rewind that work. Watch about Adam. He put Adam to work, fellas. If you got all the activities of your limb, you breathing, ain't nothing wrong with you. You able to work while you're not working. Now, that's different if it's something wrong with you. You're handicapped in some kind of way. We know there is a difference and you're not able to work and you're on disability or something. But to the ones, ain't nothing wrong with you. You got two eyes, two ears, a mouth, a nose, arms, and legs. You walking, you talking, everything working on you, except you ain't working. Something wrong with this. He created Adam, created the garden, put that man to work. That was his job. Take care of the garden. Take care of the... Look at what kind of job Adam had. Look at, look, that's beautiful. And when you get around verse 15 in that same chapter 2 of, of chapter of 2 in Genesis, it shows us that the Most High put him in the Garden of Eden to look after the garden. He already gave Adam all the instructions on what to do, what not to do. So he showed Adam order. So not only did he say you need a good work background, you got to labor, but then here's the instructions. This is order on what and what not to do. See, he's setting Adam up because he's getting Adam ready as a man with a relationship with the Most High first before he even think about giving him a woman. Because if he can't get right with the Most High, all oh, teachers, Holy Ghost, if we can't get right first with the Most High, if we can't get a job, if we don't understand leadership, why is we getting in these relationships? Why is we trying to get married? Mm. Let the church say amen. He gave Adam all the instructions once again. This is what's good for you. This is what's not good for you. But then the most I said, hmm, man don't need to be alone. So let me let me create some animals. Let me create some birds and, and animals and all kind of creatures. And, and let me put Adam over that and go ahead and name them. Out. Name them, name them, name them, name them. Hmm. But then something else wasn't, wasn't, it just wasn't enough. Why? Because the Most High said, ain't none of these animals a partner for Adam. Hmm. None of those, none of those animals could be a help me for Adam. Because the most high don't get down like that. The most high don't get down with bestiality. As, as Leviticus teach you, don't lie with animals. A uh, man shouldn't lie with man. See, they done corrupted. They done done all this. Them fallen angels, those watchers. Look at what they done. 
See, the most high, if he wanted to be wicked, he could have easily said, let me let Adam be with one of these beasts of the field. No, that's not what the most high said. The most high didn't want Adam having sex with no animals. So, so the most high created something so beautiful to be his help me. He designed a woman, a wife, a help me. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, that we could become one. He designed Eve. Put him to sleep, and we know the story. Next thing you know, this is my wife. Look at this. Woo, how the most high put our life in order. If we would live by this, ain't nothing wrong with still living by this. Because our father is about order. But we too busy going the opposite direction. Or we trying to we trying to start it our way versus Yahweh. He gave him a wife. So first of all, men, here we go again. We must have a relationship with the Most High. We must love our Heavenly Father so much and be right and be obedient. We need to be with the we need to have that close relationship with the Most High. Being obedient and doing our Father's will. And then we need to have a job. Hmm. Now I didn't say overwork yourself. Have three or four jobs where you're breaking yourself down and then you're dead. And then the health and strength is terrible. But having a job. This is very important. Because nowadays ain't too many men going to really try to get no job. They looking for, I talked to this brother the other day, I mean, I'm trying to find this girl, she better have 401k, her credit better be A1, she better have at least a five bedroom house, or her car need to be at least seven eighty thousand dollars she need to have this, she need to have that. And I looked at him and I said, what you gonna bring to the table? I said, oh man, shoot, she gonna accept me for who I am. I said, but you don't even have no job. You ain't even got no license. You don't have no car, you still live with your mama. And when you ain't living with your mama, you're bumping around with your baby mamas. All out of order. Ladies, if you're listening to what I'm saying in the video, I'm, 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 giving, you, I'm giving you some words. Stop fooling with fools. You better stop settling and you better select. And you better select a man of the most high. Fellas, we got to straighten up. Now, I know some of y'all don't like to hear a word like this, but I'm not talking to all of y'all because, once again, there are some dynamic men out here of all color, of all races, doing things the right way. But too many of us done fell down and ain't never tried to get back up. Some of us ain't never worked a day in our life, don't even know what work feel like. Well, I don't know, you know, I, hey, man, I had stuff handed to me. You don't even know how to change a flat on the car. I ain't never got my nails dirty. I ain't, well, what you gonna do when, when, when what you been doing ain't working no more? See, it's hard to have a help meet and your help meet ain't working. It's not a help meet no more. It's help me. But let me get back to what I was saying. Relationship with the most high fellas. And then having that job working. Being that leader. Then being blessed with a wife. That's why the Bible then teaches you after that that a man will leave his father and his mother to cleave to his wife because that's a whole other responsibility. Once you take her on a wife, then you can't be still being a mama's boy. Oh, teach us, Holy Spirit. You can't keep putting mama first over your wife. You got to get mama out of your business. Sorry, mama, but you better listen to me. This is why so many people stay messed up because mama trying to run the marriage. Mama is up in too much stuff. You, you, you need to learn how to leave mama alone. Mama can't live her life because she too busy trying to live her life through your life. I don't know who I'm talking to. Y'all know somebody like this. But when you understand that you leave your father and mother to cleave to your wife, you're not just disowning your parents, but you have a you have a responsibility that's greater and you are on your own now. You are a man or you are a woman, a wife or a husband. Now you have your own family. That's your number one priority now. Your children, your husband, the most high is the head of the house. 
the household. The husband is the head of his wife. Oh, come on, teach, Father. But if you don't have, if your husband is not in the most high, what are you basing your marriage on? Oh, I, I, I feel you changing up the message a little bit, Father. But it's all going in together. See, I was talking about a man that won't work, but now I see the Father is, is, is putting something else in this message. And I'm going to be obedient. Because too many of us are hooking up with the wrong folk and expecting a blessing out of a messing. We got to line up our lives with the will of the Most High. Some of us keep seeking women after women and not even seeking the Most High for, well, I, man, I'm, I just need to be blessed with a wife. How you going to handle a wife if you can't even handle your own life? Hmm. And what the Most High is showing us also here with Adam is spiritual labor. See, we always hear about manual labor. We need to work, you know, go to your job. I done had probably any job you can think of where it's back breaking to I don't care what the title is. I bet you I have done it. And there are some jobs I heard that would just flat out kill you. They will break your body down, working to stand on these hard these hard concrete flows and being in these hot warehouses with no air conditioning and lifting and bending and oh man I done done it done been there but when you start talking about spiritual labor see the most high showed us work with the most high's own self because look at our father with his creation work, work of creation and look how our father works daily on us works all the time on us. So if we are made in the likeness, oh, teach, Father. If we are made in the image, if we supposed to look like, then we supposed to act like, well, why are there so many Christians walking around here trying to live off somebody else? See, the Bible didn't tell you to take care of fools. Oh, you better keep teaching, Holy Spirit. I, I don't know about y'all, but this message is good to me. It's teaching. It's stuff that we don't want to hear, but we need to hear. Cause we've been you you done heard you done heard enough feel good sermons. But when you start looking at that spiritual labor, it's a job staying connected to the most high. A lot of times you when you look at it, because the flesh gets so weak. But when your spirit is right, you keep on staying on track no matter what. Yeah, we get knocked down, but we ain't got knocked out. Because the, 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 our father has never lost a battle. Our father is always right there with us all the time. He said I will be with you always, even until the end of time. See, we, don't, we, we, we always talk about, I found Christ. When have the most high ever left you? The problem is we leave our father. Woo, yes we do. And then we come crawling back and read that. Talking about this rededicating my life back and then leave again, come back again, leave again, come back again, leave again. No, you better go check yourself at the front door. You better go back to the cross. Spiritual behavior. Physical labor, spiritual labor. How are we working in the kingdom? How are we working? Sin when sin takes place, it separates us from the Most High. When Adam and Eve messed up, when the sin, when the sin hit, it caused separation. The Most High already told Adam what was going to happen. That's why he was so mad at Adam as the husband, as the leader, because he told Adam what to do. Adam slipped up. He messed up. And then after he messed up, he played the blame game. Well, Father, it was this woman you gave me. It's her fault. Everybody not right now, I know, try to play the blame game when things go wrong. But if we would learn to just blame ourselves, point finger at ourselves, it would be a whole lot better. Sin separates us. So the most time, once again, was, was also teaching Adam about the strong relationship. Don't break the relationship. That's why it's tough. If you are, let me let me let me talk to the ones that's married. Uh, all of y'all on her. 
that's married. I guarantee if I could come over y'all house and sit down and talk with y'all, y'all would say, ooh, we got our ups and we got our downs. JT, it ain't always what you think it is. It's, 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 it's a job being in a relation, in a marriage. It's a job when you shacking up. You shouldn't be. You really making your life harder. But if if you can if you can just take five minutes and just think for for right now how hard your marriage has been, some of y'all start getting mad because there are times in that marriage where it's got that shaky road that look like it ain't gonna never get back straight. Mom and daddy get sick. Somebody might need to move in. Children acting all funny. Somebody get laid off. There are so many things that happen in the marriage that, that make you almost go this way. You sleeping in that room, I'm sleeping in that room. A relationship is not easy. But it's only the most tired it can take two imperfect, I didn't say perfect, two imperfect people put them together and keep them together. That's why if the most tired didn't put you together, it's not going to never work. Even to the ones that's single. Sometimes your biggest problem is yourself. Your biggest enemy become yourself. Some of y'all in the marriage and, 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 and saying right now, boy, she got one more time to mess up, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to leave. I'm going to get divorced. I know we married, but I... Some of y'all saying, I know... He got one more time to do me like that. I know we shacking up, but I know that's just my baby daddy, but he got one more time to come home later. I know that's just my baby mama, but she got one more time to making your life hard. It's a headache. We add on extra. Check this out as the Most High just spoke this in me. The Most High already told us we have trials and tribulations. Our faith has already been tested. In this life, we have trials and tribulations, and it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And here we go, knowing that scripture, and what do we do? Still add mess on top of what we already got problems with. Trials and tribulations. That's why so many people are dying. So many people are stressed out. So many people are in the hospital. Somebody on their way to the hospital. Somebody right now losing their mind. Demons done took over the house because the Most High ain't in the house. I thought I was talking about man going to work, but I don't know where the Most High is leading this message. But you keep teaching, Father. I got to take self out of the way. Because this is deeper than just you need a job. That's a big part of it. But if you don't have your spirit right, whoo, it's too many spirits operating in the houses now. It's too many spirits operating in the church buildings now. It's too many spirits jumping off in the children. These demons ain't playing out here. We are at a time now where every day you cut on the news or every time you cut the internet on, on your phone, you see you see demonic activity taking over now worse than ever. A woman just a woman just put her baby in the oven. Somebody else done chopped their kid up. And folk got the nerve to want to play church every Sunday. Somebody on their way to the lake of fire. People are dying left and right. Souls is being jacked up now more than ever. And some folks just going to continue to gamble with their soul. Touch, Holy Spirit. Y'all, time is winding down. I know the most time going to change me up with this message now because, it, it, once again, it's, it's more than, than, than just... You need to be working. Your spirit need to be worked on. I feel so sorry for so many women that I know that keep moving these type of men in. They already double-minded. A double-minded man, as the Bible teaches you, is unstable in all his ways. He don't know how to make no decision. His biggest argument is with his own self because he's double-minded, not single-minded don't know how to think straight. 
So when a double-minded man moves in the house, double-minded man may want he may work one day, <laughs> then he might just quit. Double-minded man may go to church one day and then just be like, forget it. Double-minded man might make one decision and then come back and go against that same decision and don't even know how to move on. 1 Timothy chapter 5, I believe, uh, what is that, verse 8, teaches you, if anyone don't provide for his own, especially for his own house, we can say immediate family, he has denied what the faith and is worse than an infidel. You know what an infidel is? An unbeliever. So ladies, when you move in this second, this I mean first Timothy, when you move in this first Timothy chapter five, verse eight, man here, that won't provide for his own. He don't care about you. He don't care about his own children. He done denied the faith. He's worse than an infant there. Then you are hooked up with an unbeliever. If he don't work, he don't need to eat. But you make sure he got a full course meal every night, don't you? Too many ladies are going against the scripture. And I mean this out of love. You, 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 you keep wasting all of your life and energy and time on a person that you don't even supposed to be with. Some of us right now are, are keep, we keep trying to build up something that the Most High is saying, turn down. Stop asking the Most High to bless you with Boaz and you won't let go of lazy. Let me, let me leave that alone. You're not ready for Boaz. Fellas, stop crying for Ruth and you won't let go Bonquisha. You won't stay out the club. You won't quit sleeping around with her and getting her pregnant. You're not ready for a Ruth. You ain't ready for it. We have to line up our life right once again. Spiritual. How is our spiritual label? Some of us are working so hard physically that we ain't never working on nothing spiritually. Well, my job, JT, my job got me going in, man. I'm working 13 hours a day, man. I, I can't get off on the weekend. Man, I can't even spend time with my family. I, I'm this and I'm that. You broke down. You broke down. So many of us have gotten so caught up in our everyday job that the most ties now, man, I ain't got time to go. I ain't got time to study. When I, by the time I get home, I'm tired, bro. I'm sleepy, bro. That's why half of us don't know what the scripture is. We ain't got time to read the word, but we got time to get out working. Let me get on Facebook. Hold on. Got to check my comments. Woo, wait a minute, old oh boy. Boy, look at this video right here. He, World star, I gotta watch this before I go to bed. Next thing you know, you done been on Facebook two hours. And ain't opened up the word of the most high not one time. Excuses. Excuses is a setup for failure. Some of us ain't working on our spiritual life. How can you claim you love the most high and you never spend time with him? And then we got too many men out here always talking about how a woman need to submit to me, bro. The Bible say woman need to remain silent. Shut up. We the ones in control. Woman better submit to me. I'm the man of this house. But if you is a if you are a man that has not submitted to the most high, shut up and sit down somewhere. That's why in my life the most high is the head of my life off top. I'm like, uh, not Jeremiah, Joshua. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Most High. And notice Joshua wasn't even talking about no children at that time when he said that. That means anybody that was with Joshua, whether they was grown or even younger, they was going to serve the Most High. Men, we need to get like that. We making all these demands and all oh, well, they better do this. And what are we doing? Other than looking at football, boxing, and and and, and all the college games and, and, and knowing the next athlete, what's going on with this and that. What when when are we gonna come together? I can't get twenty men in this room to sit down and read the Bible. But I can get fifty in here real quick, less than an hour if I cut on pornography. Or if I do something like the the uh 
Mayweather about to fight again. Oh, the Super Bowl. I feel this room up. Y'all, let the church say amen. It's too many of us got our priorities mixed up. Psalms 19 teaches us that the Most High reveals himself to the world by his work. Look at his work. He created man in his image. See what I'm saying? Same characteristics like the Most High. But you can't tell half of us because we don't act nothing like our Father. He created man to work with him in this world. This is why family is so important. You see how family, go back to the old covenant and really look at how important family is. How the, how the man was so important, how the wife was so important. How the children, how you leave an inheritance. But nowadays, oh, I gotta say this as I close. Hmm. But nowadays, all of that has been broken up because another one of Satan's greatest things to do was to get that husband out of the house, remove the man from the house, break up the family. That's what he loved, to break up, to destroy, to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, look at how many single moms are in this world now trying to raise that hard-headed young boy. Trying to raise them girls on her own. The most high created balance, Satan comes to break up the balance. He wants you to have one parent so you can depend on the crooked government. Take the man out of the house, now you got section eight. Now you got child support check. Now you got government assistance, WIC programs. Notice none of this don't have nothing to do with the most high because that's Satan's world. I, I hate to say it like that. The, the most high desired family because if the family stayed together, there is no need for WIC programs and all that. If the man supposed to work like he's supposed to work, there not be no need for that. But you can go back in our generation and, and look for, how, oh man, public housing. Look at how long we've been depending on the government and it make me sick to my stomach because most people would never follow Yahweh's system because they've been in the Satan system so long, Brother P.P. John, that they would never come out of that system. First thing they're going to do is freeze up and say, what I'm going to do now if they take that government help away because that government help them taking away their faith in so many ways. Satan broke up the family. Now you got a lazy man in the house. When you do get a man, he, he won't work. I don't know why he won't go to work. But you, hey, he knocking me up every night. I'm, is it that good? I'm trying to close, but this is this is heavy on my heart, man. I, I mean, you, a lazy person hates to work. Bible teaches you that. They hands refuse to work. You got some of them in your family. Why you won't go get a job? Oh, man. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to hire me. You ain't even been looking. How many job applications you done filled out? Where have you went, man? Oh, man, I just... What you been doing all day? Nothing. Been watching TV. Wasting somebody else's electricity. It's sad, y'all. They hands refuse to work. Go to Proverbs if you ever want to look at laziness. Lazy people. Slug. What the Bible says about it. It is work. It's work out here. When you keep making excuses, that's just you and your excuses. You don't want to do something. And this is why, and I have to say it like this. Because I had, I had, said earlier about people who done spent so much time on their job that it's done became their master. 
Well, I can even flip that. It's some people, especially women, that's going faithfully to the church building. They so caught up in the church building, and they ain't spent no time working on their own home that their marriage is on the is on is on the edge because they always at the church. They put the they put I ain't say the most high. They put in the church building and all their activities in front of their own husband. And wonder why their kids out of order. Don't spend no time. I gotta go. This is mission night. I got. I gotta go. Open up the door. I gotta go pray. I gotta go do this. I gotta go do that. Well, why you ain't doing all this stuff at your house? But you going to the church doing it. See, this thing can go either way. And then you got these prosperity messages out here with they one one balance message out here teaching you no struggle, just prosperity. You're going to receive this. You don't hear these jokers talking about serving, persecution, spiritual labor, struggling, trials and tribulations, first fruit offerings, learning how to be a good steward, living right, being obedient, all yours, prosperity. Your soul prospering, you don't hear that. Don't y'all know by us working fellas we resemble the most high? We do. Now most people I know, they, they job, once again they work, keep them away from serving the most high, period. The most high became last on their list. And I tell people all the time, the most high will make a way for you. A way. See, this is when you stop being focused on your on your way then you will start seeing Yahweh. Old folk used to always say, you want to make the most high laugh, tell them your plan. Because some of us are too busy working on our plan that it might not even be the plan that the most high have for you. So you so caught on your plan that you done rejected the most high's plan. I don't know about y'all, but I'd rather have the plan of the most high than to look at the plan of my own. So y'all... This is my time. I, I might come back and, and uh, well, no, I don't need to do a part two. I um, I really believe that this video is for somebody in particular. I don't know who, but I pray that I've said something that can wake you up. That's my time. Have a wonderful, blessed day.